The following is a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League. On Saturday, two of the league's oldest rivals will take center stage as the Rochester Nighthawks host the Toronto Rock. The Rock punched their ticket to the playoffs last week while the Nighthawks down New England to stay alive in the East Division playoff race. It's Toronto versus Rochester, and it's coming up next. Hello everyone and welcome to Connors and Ferris Field at the Blue Cross Arena for tonight's National Lacrosse League contest between the Rochester Nighthawks and the Toronto Rock. Hello everyone, alongside Brendan McDaniels, I'm Craig Grzynski. It's the second annual Cradle for the Cure game. As the Rochester Nighthawks raise money for Cure Childhood Cancer Association, both teams will wear special jerseys with the net proceeds going to the local Pediatric Cancer Association. And Rochester and Toronto come in for a great cause. On the floor, both teams have a meaningful game to prepare for. Rochester, this is a must win. They need to win, they need New England to lose. They're coming off a big victory over New England. On Sunday, Toronto knocked off the first place Buffalo Bandits last night, 11 to 10 in overtime. If you're head coach Mike Hazen, how do you stress the desperation for tonight's game? Well, first, you got to tell them it's a playoff atmosphere right now. It's do or die. It's one or nothing. You've got to win tonight. You can't worry about the games moving forward. you got to take care of business tonight. But the one thing they've got advantage of them, Toronto was really gassed last night. They even said it postgame on VR Live when they were talking to Ashley Docking at postgame. They said that that game took a lot out of them. So that might be an advantage to Rochester. Kieran McCardle didn't play it last night. Not sure if he's in the lineup tonight. They do have Adam Jones back. So there's some moving parts there. But just like anything, Anybody can win on any given night, and Rochester needs to play their A game tonight if they want to stay in the playoff race. Well, for the keys to the game, let's go down floor level to the third member of our broadcast team, Jenna Cottrell. Yeah, guys, we're going to start with the keys of the game, and we'll begin with the away team for the Toronto Rock. A key for them is going to be playing with consistency in this game. They're looking for their third straight win, and a great way to do that is continue the way they've played so far for the last couple of games, as well as getting some secondary scoring from guys like Johnny Paulus as well as Dan Littner. While for the Nighthawks, they need to move the ball and get some good quality shots off. Well, also, Rochester needs to find the goal in transition. It's going to be a great game. Rochester with a win last week, hoping to build off of that here again tonight. Guys, back to you. Thanks a lot, Jenna. Those are the keys to tonight's game. And when we talk about the players to watch, Brendan, first familiar name, Johnny Paulus. That's right, Johnny Paulus, the former Rochester Nighthawk. He's had a great last couple weeks for the Toronto Rock. He had three goals, four assists last week including a beautiful behind-the-back assist to Dan Craig in a one-goal win over the Wings last night, two goals, and an assist in that huge overtime win against the Buffalo Bandits. He is doing such a great job with this. You see five goals and six assists in his last two games. He is really coming up and stepping up and giving them that needed extra scoring punch because they struggled to score when Adam Jones was out, and they absolutely need him to continue his hot streak. For the Rochester Nighthawks, Mr. Consistency this year, Mike Burke is our player to watch for the Nighthawks. Yeah, Mike Burke, he has a great story. He was in training camp. He got called up to the for the rush game. He played three games with the Paris River Wolves, leading that team in points in the Arena Lacrosse League. Also played some time in some major series lacrosse with the Brampton Elixirs. But he has come out and he has been very solid. Two goals, three assists last week against New England. He's one of those guys that's got to step up because you know they're going to key on Cody Jamison. You know they're going to keep an eye on, on Kyle Jackson. Ryan Banesh, you got to always keep an eye on He's one of the all-time greats. Mike Burke needs to be that guy that gives him that auxiliary scoring. He's got to be the guy that steps up and has a big night tonight if they want to pull the upset against the Rock. Well, you mentioned Kyle Jackson. Jenna caught up with Kyle earlier today who talked a little bit about the importance of Cradle for the Cure game both on and off the floor. 
And I'm being joined now by Kyle Jackson. Obviously, these special jerseys being worn tonight for Cure Childhood Cancer Association. And you are playing for Jacob Quinn, a kid who a lot of Nighthawks fans know. He was an honorary captain earlier on in the season, now a cancer survivor. What made you want to play for Jacob? I think that his story just in general is super inspirational. And um, he's a unique individual, and he loves being around the team. So for me, it was an easy choice. He's He's got a special childhood upbringing, and he's a big fan of mine. So um, having his name on the back of my jersey tonight, means a lot. He's a huge fan of yours and you earlier on today getting to present him with the jersey that has his name on it. What was that moment like? It was awesome. I think that there's a lot of experiences in the game of lacrosse that are pretty unique and pretty special, but I don't think I've ever had one like today and everything that he's gone through being able to do that for him and his family and we gave him a stick and it, it was all very, very special and definitely a moment that I'll never forget. Obviously an important night tonight on the field, but also just getting able to support an organization like it. What does this mean for you? It's more than just a game of lacrosse. I mean, we all come here because we love it, but at the end of the day, there's so much more to life than just this game, and he's a perfect example of that. Perfect. Thank you so much. Good luck tonight. Guys, back to you. That was Jenna Cottrell who caught up with Kyle Jackson and Jacob Quinn and his wonderful family. He was our honorary captain earlier this year. Cradle for the Cure Night has so many special memories for every single one of us tonight. And it should be a great one here on the floor as well. Rochester taking on the Toronto Rock. Opening face off coming up next. NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. Welcome back to the Blue Cross Arena. Let's go down to the floor for some special pregame presentations on Cradle for the Cure Night. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please turn your attention to midfield. For tonight's pregame ceremonies on Cradle for the Cure Night. This evening we honor our friends, relatives, and loved ones who had or have cancer. Please welcome our first special guest, 13-month-old Joel Spuck, who is accompanied by his parents and his three siblings, Caleb, Reagan, and Harper. Joel was diagnosed with stage four intermediate neuroblastoma and completed his treatment in November. On March 26th, his family received word that he no longer needs treatment. Now to honor this accomplishment, Joel will ring the bell to, to signify the end of active treatment and the beginning of a life free of cancer. Joel, ring that bell. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Joel Spock and his family. Cure Childhood Cancer Association. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause for Craig and Sam and all the kids in attendance from Cure Childhood Cancer Association. Great ceremonies for Cure Childhood Cancer Association on Cradle for the Cure Night and Challen Rogers and Cody Jamison doing the ceremonial face-off as Sam and Craig 
did the ceremonial face-off, both nine-year-olds representing Cure, and of course, Joel ringing the bell to signify that he is done with cancer treatment. Let's go down the floor level where Jenna is catching up with Challen Rogers. I'm joined now by Challen Rogers. Obviously an important night out on the floor, but also with these jerseys, an important night for Cure Childhood Cancer Association. What does it mean to play in a game like this? It's great. Um, you know, obviously it's a great cause and everyone here has a, has a name on the back of their jersey that, um, you know, has been affected by cancer. And, and you know, to go out here and play for, for Cure here, it's, it's a great honor. Who are you playing for tonight? I'm um, playing for my aunt. She battled uh, breast cancer. How motivating to have her name on the back of your jersey for tonight? Super motivating. Um, you know, she supported me through, the, you know, my early years in this sport. And, um, you know, to, to dedicate this game to her, it does mean a lot. Great. Thank you so much. Good luck tonight. Guys, back to you. Thanks a lot, Jenna. It's Cradle for the Cure Night. The Rochester Nighthawks taking on the Toronto Rock. And the Rock wearing black jerseys trimmed in gold. And gold is the ribbon for pediatric cancer. And Rochester wearing the white jersey trimmed in Lavender, and they also have the shorts and the socks to match. And Brendan, this is a huge game for both of these clubs. It absolutely is. Toronto is only a game and a half out of first place behind Georgia and Buffalo after their huge overtime win against Buffalo last night on their side for Rochester. They are still in the playoff hunt. Now they need to win out. They also need New England to lose out. It's going to be a very difficult task for Rochester, but Craig, they are still mathematically in it. As long as you're in it, you got to play that do or die situation like we were talking about just a moment ago, and it's all going to start with Jake Withers. He's been outstanding at the X. He was 18 of 25 last week, and he's number one in the National Lacrosse League, converting almost 75% of his faceoffs, and he's going up against a legend in Jay Thornburg. And Rochester's going to need to get as many extra possessions as possible on that faceoff. So Toronto comes up with the ball, and a huge win last night over the Buffalo Bandits. Rochester coming in off a of victory over New England last Sunday afternoon. Rochester trying to do some late season magic like they did last season. Here come the Rock on their first offensive set. Fed in front, the shot, and he scores. McCardle makes it 1 0. Well, we mentioned a moment ago we weren't sure if Kieran McCardle was going to be in the lineup. He is in the lineup. Adam Jones is not, so Jones coming back for that injury. Not playing the second half of back-to-back. -back. McCardle in tonight after he did not play last night. We'll take a look at this. Again, you see a nice move by Rob Hellyer. He had a great game last night. Pumps it right into the slot for McCardle. Take a look at it again. again. He draws Barclay in, and McCardle just has that little bit of an opening. He takes that near side. So the Rock in the lead, 1-0. And it'll be Rochester possession off the faceoff. Jake Withers, since his return, has won over 80% of his faceoff. So he's been a huge addition to the Rochester lineup. And Cody Jamison now will feed it over on the near side. Bushi got it across. On the run, the shot, and he scores. Ryan Banesh has tied it at one. Well, Rochester answers the bell right away. We'll take a peek at it again. And that's Kyle Jackson. Yeah, it's Kyle Jackson just sweeping across the top. And you see he beats his defender, Harris, and he gets his hands free on the left-hand side, and he's able to put it in. And that's important for Rochester. you got to stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with Toronto. You can ill afford to dig yourself in a hole in another procedure violation on Toronto, so Rochester will get the ball back. Not it up, 1-1. Rochester in the whites. Toronto in the road blacks as jerseys will be raffled off with the net proceeds going to Cure Childhood Cancer Association. Fed now behind the net. That one trickles wide, grabbed by Triolo. Triolo swings it across. Jamison ducks in underneath, and he has that one stripped away. Looked like it was going to be a shot clock violation anyway. It didn't look like Cody was going to get a shot off. Toronto now setting up their offense. Hellier to Schreiber. 
Near side, McCardle. McCardle charging in on goal. The shot and the save made by Warren Hill. Hill getting a second straight start. And when I asked the coaching staff, they said, we're playing the winning goalie from last week. And Hill with a career high 50 saves, his first professional win. So they go with a hot hand in goal. And Warren Hill between the pipes tonight. McCardle shooting, and that one ricochets wide of the net. McCardle now grabs it. Left wing looking for a lane, feeds it on across, walking in on goal. The fake, the shot over the top of the net. And a shot clock violation. It'll be Rochester ball, and Hellier had quite the opportunity there and just missed. Rob Hellier does not miss very many of those wide open shots, though. But it was nice to see him having a little comeback last night in last week against Philadelphia because he went through a streak where he just was not able to score. He went through a four-game streak where he only had six points. But last week against Philadelphia, three goals, three assists. He had four and three last night against Buffalo, and that one was a wide-open one that he usually does not miss those. Rose makes the save, and that one goes over the near glass, and Rochester will get a fresh 30. Speaking of impressive performances, Nick Rose was outstanding last night against the powerful Bandits attack. And here they come in transition. Faking, shooting, and the save made by Warren Hill. Yeah, Tulit just kind of double clutched. It didn't look like he was sure what he wanted to do on this. Let's take a look at the replays. You see there, he kind of does that little, tries a face dodge, but got himself in too deep and didn't really get a good shot off against Warren Hill. The Nighthawks now, Bushi. Feeds it down low, cutting in the middle. Triolo gets the shot off, and that one goes wide. Grabbed off the end glass by Nick Rose, and Rose made his 4,000th career save last night. Yeah, he's and closing in on top 10 all time in National Lacrosse League history. About 400 away from getting in the top 10. Schreiber, near side, shot by Johnny Paulus. Grabbed by Jake Withers. He'll flip it on ahead to Hasek. Hasek's got a trailer, that's Banesh. In front to Withers, he can't connect. And Rochester will take over off the big hit in the near corner. Hasek will flip it over to Burke, fires it across on the half wall as Rochester will get the fresh offense out on the, out on the turf. Grabbed on the far side by Thied. Thede, spin move, rolls in front, the shot, and Rose makes the save. Rochester going after the loose balls. And that one is scooped up. The pass is knocked down as Burke tried to feed it on back. It was deflected. And that one is played on ahead with 10 minutes and 20 seconds to go. First five minutes, Toronto's defense has been very aggressive. It'll be interesting to see if they can keep this up coming off a very hard fought game against the Buffalo Bandits. Shot on the run by Schreiber who was held in check pretty much last night by Matt Vincent company. The shot in tight and Warren Hill makes the save. As Dan Craig broke in and Warren Hill has looked very comfortable in goal for the Nighthawks. He was a week ago and right now looks like he's settling in quite nicely. He had a little bit of success against the Georgia Swarm earlier this year when he came in relief of Angus Goodleaf. And as you mentioned last week against New England, he was just simply outstanding with his 50 saves. And he also had three assists as well. 9.40 to go. We are knotted up at one here at the Blue Cross Arena. You're watching the NLL on VR Live. BR Live makes watching live sports easy. Download or visit to watch all of the National Lacrosse League action and more with BR Live. Here come the Toronto Rock. McCardle over to Schreiber. Now over on the half wall, fed back near side. McCardle, penalty coming up to the Rochester Nighthawks. McCardle shot, kick save by Warren Hill. You see the athleticism there by Warren Hill. He also played field lacrosse at nearby Syracuse University. He's one of those players that can excel at the goaltending position indoor and outdoor, which is a very difficult thing to do. 
Let's take a look at the penalty first, and we'll talk about Warren Hill. And there we see a cross check up high. And it looks like that was on Barclay. So, but you, yeah, you mentioned goaltending goal tending in field lacrosse, you're more upright. Goaltending in indoor, you're down, your stick is down. I mean, two completely different postures. And Warren Hill has been excellent at both. So the Toronto Rock on the first power play of the evening. Paulus, the shot saved by Hill. Toronto comes in with a 46% face-off conversion rate. It's right in, the, right in the middle of the pack in the National Lacrosse League. They're three of four last night against the Bandits. The power play was working really well. And Burke now will give it over on the half wall. Jackson, now to Banesh, to Bushi, the low shot, and he skips that one wider than that. It goes across midfield, shot clock violation. 8.29 to go, we are knotted up at one apiece. Cradle for the Cure Knights. That's why the Nighthawks are wearing the whites trimmed in lavender, and Toronto will pick up a penalty. They had some real sharp jerseys, black trimmed in gold. Illegal cross check is the call on the floor. Yeah, it's going to be on Adam J. So now we'll be going four on four here for about 53 seconds. Fed in front, the shot, and Rose the save. Over now near side to Burke, coming off a five-point night in the win over New England. Now Jackson trying to get in under, underneath the shot and Rose the save with the right glove. And he will play it on ahead. Here come the Rock in transition. The shot, and that one's whistled wider than that by Challen Rogers. And Challen's got to be in the conversation for MVP. He can play offense, defense, transition. He plays on the power play, short man. There is not too much that this young man can't do. Yeah, I mean, it's almost a it's a hybrid position. I mean, you can't call him a defenseman, can't call him a transition guy because he does so much more than th just that. And 26 points so far this season. There's a couple guys on the rock, and I mean, credit Matt Sawyer and Blaine Manning and that, and that staff for identifying these guys that they can do multiple things. I mean, a lot of times in the National Lacrosse League, you've got a lot of specialists that can do one thing really good. But, I mean, this is a guy in, in Rogers, he can do a lot of things really, really well, and they take advantage of it, and he's a perfect guy for it. That shot is knocked down by the rookie Barclay. Here comes Hasek in transition. Rochester on the power play for the next 36 seconds. Flip to Jackson. Now over to Benesh, and he'll drop it off for Cody Jamison, who scored his 250th goal of his career during the win over New England. Fed out front to Triolo. Pass up top, Banesh in on goal, faking, shooting, and that one is turned aside. Yeah, he's trying to sneak it by Nick Rose, just on the inside of his leg, and Rose smartly was able to pick that one up. Edwards will give it on back to Lintner. Lintner to Hellier. Elliers, seven points last night in the win, and that shot from the outside by Lintner is kicked away by Warren Hill. Ahead now to Robertson. Robertson tried to feed it through the middle of the Withers. Grabbed on the near boards by Bushi. 16 seconds left on the shot clock. Rock back at even strength, and Vinesh will give it over now on the half wall. The shot by Thede is stopped by Rose, and he'll get it across midfield. Here come the Rock, and they'll put on the brakes. They'll change up personnel. It's Tom Schreiber. He's known as Captain America in Toronto and throughout the National Lacrosse League. Gets it over to Johnny Paulus. Paulus over on the far side. Now back near side. That one is flipped on over by Slade, and a shot clock violation, and Slade Another one of those players that's played offense and defense at the game tire last night, and then a real gritty game-winning goal to give Toronto the big home win over Buffalo. And he had the game winner the week before in Philadelphia as well. Yeah, we talked about 
Matt Sawyer knowing how to take advantage of the guys he's got on his roster. Slade is another one of those guys that can do a lot of different things, and he has paid dividends for him. Scooped up behind the net by Rogers. 4.58 to go, first quarter still. Knotted up at one apiece here in Rochester, New York. Toronto trying to keep pace. If they win tonight, they'll be a game behind division leading Buffalo and Georgia. And Toronto so desperately wants that home playoff game. Over now to McCardle. McCardle feeds it in front of the net, can't connect with Paulus. Armstrong going after it. And another shot clock violation, four and a half to go. And a very low scoring first quarter. Kyle Jackson's got Rochester's only goal. That tied it up. We'll be back on PR Live. Welcome back to Rochester. The Nighthawks tied with Toronto at one right now. I'm joined by head coach Mike Hazen for Rochester. What have you seen so far tonight from your team? Uh, right now we're a little bit sloppy, just trying to find our groove a little bit. And, and them coming off last night, they're, they're sharp and they're playing quick right now. So I think we gotta get to uh, match their level a little bit better here. But hearing some of your staff talking about how this team needs to settle in, you know, what do you want to see going forward from this group? Uh, again, just uh, just keep our effort going here and moving forward. Like I say, we are where we are, and uh, hard work is going to get us out of this. So we're just going to keep pushing. Perfect. Thank you so much, Coach. Guys, back to you. Thanks a lot, Jenna and Mike Hazen, stressing that hard work. He was a hard working player when he played and he spent most of his career here as a Rochester Nighthawk. And I think that really kind of righted the ship last week. And right now, Rochester even up with Toronto 1-1. Yeah, I mean, a true, true blue collar guy when he played. And I mean, he reflects in his team. And I mean, they've, they've struggled at times throughout this season. But I mean, really here tonight against a very good Toronto Rock team. I mean, they're holding their own. Fed in the slot feed, driving to the net, ripped down to the turf. And that one goes out of play. It takes a lot to get Dawson Thede down on the carpet. Yeah, Dawson Thede is a big guy, 6'4", 225 pounds. And he tried to split a double team, but I mean, these Rock defenders, I mean, they're big themselves. They're all, a lot of them are over six feet tall, 215, 220 plus pounds themselves. So they're not your run of the mill small defenders. Fed over McCardle, the shot and the save made by Warren Hill, fed on ahead to Robertson. Rochester attacking with numbers. Robertson in on goalie scores. Daryl Robertson. Robertson gets one in transition. He was taking this one all the way. He opened up his body. He didn't see really Thornburg commit to him all that quickly. And he puts the mid-range shot away. That's a nice job by Robertson, he kind of opened up to see who was going to come challenge him, and Thornburg kind of came over, but really wasn't charging at him. And so Robertson took it and went. Three forty-one to go, two-one Nighthawks. Procedure call off the face-off, and Jake Withers with another face-off victory against Jay Thornburg. That's three of four now for Withers. Burke gets it across now to Banesh. Now to Burke, as Rochester will get Jackson out on the turf now. Here comes Burke in on goal, the shot, and Rose makes the stop. Across midfield, here come the Rock. In transition, fed in front of the net, the shot. What a save by Warren Hill. That was an excellent save by Warren Hill. And Bushi had a wide open opportunity and he couldn't get it. Two beautiful offensive opportunities and the goaltenders stepping up for both sides. 2.48 to go. Two to one, Rochester. Fed over now, near side to Paulus to the cutter in front, the shot he scores. Beautiful ball movement as Johnny Paulus with a slick pass in front. And Rob Hellyer is tied it at two. An even better off-ball cut by Rob Hellyer. See, Hellyer gets behind Barclay as defender. There's a beautiful pass by Paulus. 
even better finish by Hellyer. We're tied up at two. We mentioned Rob Hellyer. This is the guy who's closing in on 500 points for his career. Led the team in scoring last year, but he did go through some struggles when Adam Jones is out. He went four games with only scoring six points, three goals, three assists, but he's got seven goals and six assists in the last two games. He's got a goal and an assist here already tonight. Gillies across midfield to Graham Hasek, and Rochester now will set up offensively. Tied up two to two. Jamison will give it on back to Thede. On the near boards to Bushi. Fed to Burke, the shot that ricochets in is pinballed in on Nick Rose, who makes the save. And down the floor comes Toronto. One of the keys was to corral their transition. And that pass in front is knocked down. Here comes Hasek as he pirouetted away from his rock forward. Now here he comes down the floor. The shot, that goes wide. Grabbed by Triolo as he brings down the loose ball. Now to Jackson, 1.38 to go, 2-2. First quarter action coming to you live from the Blue Cross Arena. Fed over now near side and Toronto playing some real rugged defense. Fed in front and that one has stopped as Jamison put it right into the pads of Rose. Yeah, Cody tried to finesse that one in. It's usually not his style. Cody usually likes to fire that in there with some hot sauce on it, but that time took a little bit off of it. And Rose was able to stop it. Slade down the near boards to McCardle. Fed in front, the shot, and the save made by Warren Hill. Warren Hill's really been seeing the ball excellent tonight. That is his 10th save on 12 shots. Rochester now on the counter attack. Jamison's shot is stopped by Rose, and he'll scoop it up and loft it on ahead. Final minute to play here in the opening stanza. 2-2 is our score. Hellier from the high slot, the shot. Hill's got it underneath him. That was a great job by the young goaltender. They're pulling him off to get the extra attacker. So now it's a six on five for Rochester. 15 seconds to go here in the opening quarter as Cody Jamison will let the clock tick down. Fed in front, the shot by Burke denied by Rose. Picked up by Triolo. Now to Bushi. Bushi with three seconds left. Bushi being held up, penalty. fires that one off the glass. Yeah, we're gonna get a penalty here before the before the clock expires. It's gonna be a hold, so Rochester will go on the power play to start the second quarter. So Rochester and Toronto are all knotted up at two, and Rochester will have the man advantage when we come back. You're watching the NLL on BR Live. The NLL is a proud supporter of Right to Play. Visit NLL.com slash bid to participate in an autographed jersey auction running now until April 11th. You can also join the NLL in supporting their work by making a donation. Visit Nighthawks.com slash RTP and donate today. And tonight, Rochester playing in their second annual Cradle for the Cure game. As the net proceeds from the jersey auction go to support Cure Childhood Cancer Association. Both teams wearing special jerseys tonight and each player with a special person on the back of their sweater that they are playing for. Cody Jamison playing for Brandon Steyer's daughter. Brandon was a former member of the Rochester Nighthawks and is the son of owner Kurt Steyer's. And here we go, the second quarter about to get underway. Thornbird against Withers, and Withers trying to get that stick free. He feels he's being held up. Sure looked like he was being held. So remember, Rochester's on the power play after the hold by Jordan Magnuson. Jamison up top to Banesh. 
They'll work it out over on the far side, and Benesh will give it to Jamison, and work behind the net to Jackson. Jackson fed out front, the shot by Jamison, sliding save by Rose. They got the shot that they wanted. They put Jackson right behind the goal, and it left Cody Jamison wide open for a clear shot. Toronto still dangerous shorthanded. In fact, they lead the National Lacrosse League in shorthanded goals. Played over now on the near side, Hellier. Hellier, five seconds to work with. The shot and a stick save by Hill. Warren Hill getting his second straight start for head coach Mike Hazen. Who could blame him after a career night in New England and a must win? And another must win, you might as well go with the same goalie. And he's he's proven Hazen right by putting him in the goal. He's been outstanding so far tonight. But up top, Jamison, the shot. Rose thought he had it. He scores. The ball trickled across the goal line. Then the Nighthawks regain the lead. Cody Jamison put some mustard on that shot. And it proved to be too tough for Nick Rose. Looked like he got it right underneath his armpit to start, and he just wasn't able to secure the ball. We talked about it we were a couple minutes ago, and I talked about Cody Jamison finessing that shot. That's a shot right there on the power play. When he gets wide open, he's allowed to crank it. It is very hard to stop. You saw right there is Rose initially was able to get a piece of it, but if you don't get that whole thing, you run the risk of it trickling in like it did right there. Kyle Jackson picking up the lone assist and Rochester back in the lead by one. Withers, second year pro, will get it over to Hasek. Out of Benesh as Rochester gets Thede and Burke to join the action. Jamison from the left wing, flip pass in front of the net. Picked up, fired in on goal by Burke, but that one is batted down. And the Rock now will take over in Rochester territory. It looked like Burke took that shot right into Chandler Rogers' arm. Never got to the goaltender. Slade with it on the left wing. Feeds it in front of the net and Hill's gotta make the save. As that one was just deflected in on goal. Rochester with the ball on the far wing. Benesh now will join the rush, he takes the feed. Fires it across. Taken there by Triolo, drops it back to Thede. Thede feeds it in front of the net. That's off the stick of Benesh. And intercepted, Hostrauser now. Up the floor to Edwards. Edwards into the Rochester zone. Over now to Hellier. Driving in the shot, kick save by Hill. Huge save by Warren Hill. He's just coming up gold every single time, it seems like. That was a nice move by Hellier inside. 11.56 to go, second quarter, 3-2 Nighthawks. Let's take a look at that save one more time. You see the replay up in your right corner. Hellier coming in, has a beautiful look at it. And Hill just gets a piece of it, and that's all he needs. Toronto now with the ball is Dan Craig has it on the left wing. Craig trying to get away from Armstrong, still with it. Hossett goes over to help out. Fed over near side, Schreiber feeds it in front of the net and that one is broken up. And Hill will scoop it up and feed it on ahead. Great job by Mike Manley in there getting physical right in front of the crease, not letting that entry pass come in. Jamison from the left wing. Trying to feed it through the middle. Hostrauser just grabs that one out of the air. And we got a penalty coming up. You see saves 14-14. But Rochester does have the 3-2 advantage on the scoreboard. This penalty is going to be on Toronto. This is going to be Jordan Magnuson again. It's going to be another hold. It's the second hold he's been called for in the last five minutes. So Rochester will go back on the man up. There's one of two so far tonight. Benesh up top to Jamison. And Cody Jamison, quarterback in the power play. Over on the right wing, the shot he scores. Mike Burke on the power play. You 
You saw in their first two power plays, they're working the left side. This time they work the right side. You see Burke keeps coming in. Nobody challenges him. They keep thinking he's going to dump it off down low into the corner. As Brad Cree basically was, was almost challenging him to take that in. Didn't think he was going to shoot, and Burke made him pay. So our player to watch for the Rochester Nighthawks gives his team a 4-2 lead. Second straight power play goal for Rochester. Big loose ball battle off the faceoff, still going after it. And six players on the floor fighting for it, and Withers comes away with it. Now to Hasek, over on the near boards to Kyle Jackson. Jackson turns the corner, gives it back near side to Banesh. Fires it over now on the fireboards. On the run, the shot, and that one is grabbed out of the air as Bushi let it go. Tullet racing in on goal. The shot, kick save, Warren Hill. Warren Hill is on his game tonight. It's exactly what Rochester needed. They needed a goaltender to stand on his head to give them a chance, and Warren Hill's doing that so far. Jamison feeds it in front to Thede, and he whips that one wide of the net. Here come the Rock into the Rochester zone. Edwards feeds it in front. Hellier the shot, he scores. Oh, no, no. they're going to wave it off. No, they're going to call a crease violation. No, the backside official's calling it a goal. The front side had a crease violation. The back side says it was a goal. Let's take a look. Just from this first look, I think it's good. I think he doesn't, I don't think he goes into the crease. That's gonna be a tough one. So on the floor, they are calling it a goal. The crew chief, Ian Garrison, will take a look. Yeah, the one official waved it off, said crease violation, and the backside official came in and called it a goal. Let's take a look at it one more time. Actually, we see it a couple of times. Here's Hellier. He doesn't step in there. Now, the matter is, is does he step in before the ball crosses the goal line? It's hard to see right there. He's, he's still not in. I think that's a good goal, Craig. I think it is as well. It, it doesn't looks like, looks like it's in. It, it looks like it's in. It doesn't look, look. Hellier does a great job of really tight roping that crease. See right here, he's free, he's free, he's free. He dives and right here where he lands. This is what they're looking at. And he, he lands. You can just see just a little bit of green in between his shoe and the crease, which indicates he did not go in the crease right there, and you see the ball's already crossed at that point, so it doesn't matter what happens after that. I think that's gonna be a good goal. Well, if this goal does stand, that is the second goal of the game for Rob Hellier. You see, you see that official right behind the goal. He's the one that initially said no goal, but you see right here, he's outside the crease. Right there, he's still outside the crease. Ball goes over at that point right there, so it doesn't matter where his feet are anymore. Still four to two, Rochester. And they're, they're taking a long look at that. I mean, to, me, to me, it looks pretty cut and dry that he did not step in the crease. But you see this back official, this plays out. You see this back official, he's the one that calls it no goal. 
and the backside official comes in and waves him off. So we're going to get the official word here from Ian Garrison. So what we have here is a, if you look at the rule book. of inconclusive evidence as to whether the ball did or did not cross the goal line, the ruling of the lead official stands, no goal. Oh. So no goal, if you have to reference it in the rule book, that is actually rule 17.84, which is officials mechanics. Which it, so Rochester with a 4-2 lead will explain that a little bit more in its entirety. When we come back, it's still 4-2. We'll be back. You're watching the NLL on BR Live. Welcome back to the Blue Cross Arena. And the officials got it right. I mean, rule 17.84, the officials will stop a play as per any of the play on situations with the three man crew shall the lead official and single side official have a discrepancy. The crew chief will automatically review the play at any point in the game. A team is not charged a challenge in this situation. Upon review, the crew chief, if the review is deemed inconclusive, the original call by the lead official will stand. It was called no goal. It was inconclusive. And that's what the call is, no goal. Let's go down to four level now. It's Jenna, it's with head coach Matt Sawyer of the Toronto Rock. Yeah, I'm here right now with Matt Sawyer. A very close game, kind of back and forth. What do you see from your team and what do you guys need to do going forward? Well, you know, we've uh, we've been playing well to this point. We make a few mental mistakes. We just got to get sharper in that area. It's a long game and we got a lot ahead of us here. Perfect. Thank you so much, coach. Guys, back to you. Thanks a lot, Jenna. Very nearly was 4-3, to three, but it's 4-2. And Rochester with a two-goal advantage. They'll have the ball. And there's 9.39 to go here in the second quarter. Yeah, it was interesting that last goal call because we thought they're, they, one called in the crease and one called a good goal. And we were focused on whether it was a crease or not and not between the disagreement between the two officials. And when they looked at the play, they determined that the ball didn't fully cross the goal line. I, the, from the advantage I had, I thought the ball fully crossed the goal line where it's clearly, they did not have evidence that showed that the ball crossed the goal line completely. So that's why they made the call as inconclusive. And that's why we're still at four to two. And Brad Cree, a nice play to take that ball away. And here come the rock the other way. Hellier down the near boards as they will change up personnel. Slade gets the feed from Schreiber. Over now to Paulus. Fed in front, the shot, and that one goes wide of the net. Scooped up in the near corner and fed on ahead as Withers will get it across the timeline. Watch there by Jay. Withers, second year pro out of the Ohio State University. Now to Triolo. To Thieg, cutting the middle, he can't hang on. Picked up now by Burke. Burke to Jamison shot. That skims off the right pad of Rose. And Triolo is going to track it down. May come as a surprise. Mike Triolo tried out for his high school basketball team. Made one practice, was cut in 10th grade, and stuck with lacrosse. So basketball's loss is Rochester and the NLL's gain. Jamison fires that one wide, and there's a nice rebound by the big man. Six foot seven, gets those long arms out there. He's got the reach advantage there. This is gonna be a shot clock violation, so Jamison lets it go. Across midfield to McArdle. 4-2 Nighthawks. Rogers, now to Hellier. Hellier looking for a free lane. He'll get it across on the far side. McArdle the shot, and that one is smothered by Hill. Warren Hill is really doing a nice job of seeing the ball and stopping the ball, not allowing the Rock to get second and third chance opportunities. As you see, Rochester has had a couple second and third chance opportunities here in the last couple minutes. No penalty call there. The shot, and that one is stopped by Rose. Robertson banging bodies. Poe Strouser in and out of his stick. Robertson still battling for it, and it's flipped across midfield to Craig. Bounces off a hit by Jackson. Seven minutes to go, four to two Rochester in a must win for the Nighthawks. A rock victory would bring them within one game 
of first place Buffalo and Georgia in the East. Set in front behind the back shot by Paulus denied and Hill will scoop up the rebound. Once, once again, Warren Hill doing a great job, one and done, and that's it. Don't allow them to get any rebounds or second chance opportunities. Ryan Benesh, 13 year pro out of Kitchener, Ontario. Has it on the half wall. Fires it across to Burke. He gives it over to Triolo. Triolo near side to Thede. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Set across, that's tapped away. And here comes Edwards. And a shot clock violation and Damon Edwards looking, shooting, and he rockets that one right in to Warren Hill who feeds it on ahead, two on one break. The other way in on goal, the shot he scores. Colton Armstrong. The Rochester transition game has been excellent tonight. Warren Hill with a long outlet pass up to Colton Armstrong. And he had Cody Jamison open on the back side. And this is what makes a guy like Cody Jamison so valuable as Slade, the defender, he realizes that's Cody Jamison on the back side. He's saying, you know what? If I gotta make a choice between letting Cody Jamison shoot or Colton Armstrong to shoot, I'm letting Armstrong shoot and hoping for the best. And unfortunately for him, Colton Armstrong put it in there. The Peterborough, Ontario native getting the goal and Rochester's now scored five of the last six goals in this game. And that shot is denied by Rose. How about Colton Armstrong, his fourth game He's now got three goals. He scored his first professional goal in the first meeting between these two clubs. How about that outlet pass by Warren Hill as well? Get that thing started. Warren Hill had three assists last game, and you see why he is great in moving that ball up the floor. We got delayed penalty on Rochester coming up. Paulus to Schreiber. Flips it in tight, the shot, save, and the rebound is corralled by Hill. Warren Hill is single-handedly keeping Rochester in this game. We'll take a look at the penalty, and it's on uh, Barclay for a hold. So James Barclay with a couple penalties tonight. Toronto will go on the power play. Rogers up top. Fed over now to Paulus. Dumps it in front. That shot goes wide of the net. Ricochets off the near boards. Hellier couldn't pick it up. Gillies feeds it on ahead to Manley. And the Penyan native will slow it down and give it to Bushi and head off for a change. Manley Smiley slowing that down did not have the numbers. Bushi bounces it over to Banesh. Benash shooting through a screen save, and the rebound is grabbed, and Postrauser will push it up the turf. He's got Hellier over to his left, takes it coast to coast, he scores! <laughs> that quickly quiets the Rochester crowd down here in transition. Paul's trowler, trouser, excuse me, comes in all alone one-on-one -on -one, and he beats Warren Hill right over the left shoulder in transition. That's really one of the parts of Rochester struggled all season is their transition defense right there, a one-on-nothing break. Procedure call and another face-off victory for the Former Buckeye, Jake Withers, 4.33 to go. 5-3 to three, Rochester. You're watching the National Lacrosse League on BR Live. Want all the latest news, interviews, and more delivered straight to your inbox? Head over to NLL.com and sign up for the NLL newsletter now. You will not want to miss a beat. 5-3, the Rochester Nighthawks in the lead over the Toronto Rock. And Rochester 
going to work offensively. As it's fed behind the net to Jamison. Fed out in front to Thied. He's got it knocked away. Stripped away again, but Thied somehow out muscles his defender and fires it in on goal. But that ricochets wide. I think Cree got a piece. Now the dunk attempt. And Triolo denied by Nick Rose. A couple good opportunities for Rochester, and they come up empty. Johnny Paulus said he's feeling a lot more comfortable in this offense, said the chemistry's working. That is the key to his production the last several games. Paulus over now near side to Hellier. Six seconds on the shot clock, spinning. Still has it. Tried to get it over to Paulus. That one is knocked over to Hill, and Hill fires it quickly on ahead to Withers. Flip pass to Armstrong. Armstrong tried to drive to the net, but he stood up. And he'll bring it back up top to Burke. Mike Burke down the near boards. Rochester with a wholesale change is Bushy against Hostrauser. Slings it over near side to Jamison. Jamison's still with it. Across the drive, the jump, and the save by Rose. Great opportunity by Burke, but he's denied by Rose. Now Rogers fed it over near side, grabbed off the near glass as Hellier left up to grab that one. Now to Schreiber. Schreiber with nine seconds on the shot clock. Steers it over now on the far side. The shot, McCardle stopped with the right glove save by Warren Hill. Can't say enough on how well Warren Hill has played not only last game, but in the first half tonight. He's really solidifying himself. He's the top man here in Rochester. Yeah, he, his last six quarters have been phenomenal. And the pass and the finish from in tight. And Rochester's lead is now 6-3. Brian Banesh right in the middle. Take a look at this again. Cody Jamison finding the cutting. Banesh. Take a look at this. Just slips his defender right there. His defender got caught ball watching. And as soon as Banesh realized that he saw the back of his defender's head, he slipped him. Got in. That's Jamison's third assist of the first half. The first goal for Banesh. And it's 6-3 Rochester. Well, Ryan Benesh, who's closing in on 1,000 points. He'd be the 10th player in league history. Only 14 away from that. Benesh, a great acquisition at the trade deadline for owner and general manager, Kurt Steyers. Oh, a big hit as Hasek is knocked down right at midfield. Now we got a whistle. And it's going to be Rochester possession. Well, Craig, it's funny you mentioned that because when all those trades were going down and the fans were like, what are they doing? They're trading everybody away. And all of a sudden they got Brian Benesh and you go, oh, wait a minute. They took all that away, but they got Brian Benesh. That's a pretty good trade off. Not bad at all. And then Bushi, you got for a draft pick. Yeah, but you got Bushi and, and Benesh out of all those trades. It's really helped out Rochester. I mean, they've looked a lot better over these last few weeks since those two came in the lineup. Take a look at the saves. Both Rose and Hill with 20. And that one is whistled wide of the net by Cree. Here come the Nighthawks. Robertson driving the shot. And a left pad stop by Nick Rose. 118 to go here in the first half. Rochester in the lead by three. As Dan Craig will set up on the left wing. Back now to Paulus. Over far side to Craig. Craig breaks free, shooting, and he misses the mark. That one settles to the right of Hill, and it's flipped on the near boards to Hellier. Five seconds left on the shot clock. That ricochets wide of the net. Scooped up by Oren Hill. He'll drop it back, fed over near side. Benesh shoots and scores. Ryan Benesh goes top near corner, and it's 7-3. Back-to-back goals by Ryan Benesh in the last minute and a half. And that's exactly why you pick up a guy like Ryan Banesh. He can score in a multitude of fashions. So here's Banesh, just a mid-range shot. As Slade doesn't really come out on him, has his stick down, 
Gives a wide open lane for Banesh to shoot. Gives a little fist pump at the end. And Rochester up seven to three. So Ryan Banesh is second in a row. 43.9 to go here in the first half. As Withers gets caught up high and bounces off of that hit, here come the Nighthawks. 9 of 12 now for Withers at the X. That's exactly what Rochester needed tonight. And a timeout call by the Rochester Nighthawks. Smart timeout because you've had so far, all three facets of your game working. You've been getting the face-off advantage. Your goaltender's playing outstanding, and you're getting some offensive output. Now with 24 seconds left, you have an opportunity now to take the last shot. And then, worst case scenario, you go in the locker room up by four. Best case scenario, you go up by five. But Ryan Banesh has been just outstanding these last couple minutes. Let's take a look at his two goals. First, Cody Jamison gets Banesh as he slips his defender on the back door cut, and then here in transition, Van Sheppen finds Banesh as the defender does not come out on him. So two quick goals by Ryan Banesh, who mentioned one of the all-time greats in the National Lacrosse League. Now 987 points. Now well, we'll see what assistant coach Mike Kersey drew up for the offense. The net to our left is empty, so Rochester will set up for one final shot here. Yeah, Mike Kersey, he's one of the more creative assistant coaches in the National Lacrosse League, so it'll be interesting to see what he's got dialed up here on this last shot. So now Rochester's gonna hold the ball. They'll wait till about eight seconds or so before they start this play. So they make sure they have an opportunity at a rebound. But if it's a rebound, the, the Rock won't have enough time to get it back down to the other end and get an empty netter. Down to seven seconds. Fed over. Now the pass in tight. Settles on the back of the net. Two seconds left. Rose tries to fire it down toward the empty net. And it's broken up by Bushi. The first half comes to a close. The Rochester Nighthawks outscore the Toronto Rock 5-1. to one. And quarter number two, and they lead seven to three over Toronto. As Rochester out shooting the Toronto Rock, 29-23. And Rochester with a big four goal cushion as they're gonna head into halftime. And in a moment, we'll head down to the turf where I know Jenna's gonna catch up with Defenseman Brad Gillies. Well, the Rochester Nighthawks right now perfecting or executing their game plan to perfection right now. Yeah, you, if you're Mike Hazen, you couldn't have asked for a better half from your team. I mean, you put up seven goals. You only gave up three defensively. Warren Hill's been outstanding. Jake Withers has been getting you a majority of the faceoffs, nine of 12 on the faceoffs. Warren Hill has been seeing the ball very well, and not only that, he's been getting the ball out quickly in transition, allowing Rochester to move the ball and get in their offensive sets very quickly. Let's go downstairs as Jenna Cottrell is with Brad Gillies. Yeah, I'm here with Brad Gillies, quite the second quarter for your team, five goals. What kind of opened up for you guys in terms of scoring? Um, we kind of just stuck to the process. Um, this team's been taking a lot of the right steps forward, and uh, you've seen it these past few games, and. Uh, we are trying to put it all together, and it showed that first half. You guys winning last week, now kind of bringing that momentum into this week. Do you feel like the team's maybe playing a little bit looser here tonight? Uh, I definitely think a little bit looser. Yeah, we've uh, we got a little bit of momentum coming, and uh, but we're still kind of playing with house money. We got nothing to lose right now. Uh, everything is against us, so we uh, we're kind of playing uh, very easy. Important game out on the floor, but also for the meaning behind these jerseys for the Cure Childhood Cancer Association. You're playing for Joel Sprug. Kind of what, or Sprock, excuse me, what kind of made you want to decide to play for him? Um, so one of our ticket reps uh, got in contact with me, um, the family season ticket holders, and they told me about Joel's story, and uh, I hopped all over right when I heard. Um, 
I got to meet the family on Monday. They're just a, a really, really great family and uh, very high spirits. And uh, it's no, it's no wonder why they beat this thing. And all the best to them. Having them here tonight, the game so far, you guys winning. Kind of what has this experience been like, knowing that you're a part, important piece of you know doing such good for children and, and, and families that are going through a lot. Yeah, this game's uh, put a lot in perspective for all of us players, for sure. Um, we're playing for something a little bit bigger than ourselves. It's not just a game tonight, and uh, so it's showing. And uh, it's been it was great seeing them uh, bring the bell at the start of the game, and uh, it's just been a fantastic night all, all 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 night. And so looking forward to keep it going. Thank you so much. Good luck in the second quarter or half, guys. Uh, we're gonna be right back right now. Rochester up seven to three over the Toronto Rock. We'll be back for the second half highlights coming up. All right, and I'm being joined right now by Holly Dutcher, uh, your executive director of Cure Childhood Cancer Association, the second year partnering with the Nighthawks. What made you want to continue this partnership for this year? Well, I think it's just a wonderful partnership because the Nighthawks are so prominent in the community and, you know, they really want to rally behind our kids and our families. And it's so heartwarming that, you know, there's such a, a support of our organization. And a couple cool moments earlier on in this game, you know, the ringing of the bell from Joel Spock, as well as a ceremonial uh, opening face off. You know, a lot of these kids going through so much as well as their families. What is it like to have these experiences for them here tonight? This is something that they are just looking forward to. We have um, one of our kids was just let out of the hospital yesterday, and he's so excited to be here. And you know, there's, they were talking about doing day passes just so they could come to this game, and it just means so much to them because childhood cancer is something that people don't really want to think about, but it really is happening in our community. And you see, you know, October is pink for uh, breast cancer awareness, and our kids just feel like. People don't really know about childhood cancer and the awareness and the importance of it. So it lets them know their community is behind them. And, the, you know, the bell ringing that you talk about, uh, how, would, how important is that to have that ceremonial celebration of, especially for a child going through so much and having that experience? It's a physical representation of the end of this horrible thing that they are going through. And it's just, we, we're calling it the bell of hope because it just signifies not only that this child has finished treatment, but also that other kids can hear it. And it's, it's something that they can look forward to and hope for as well. So um, the hope that it signifies is just, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's a very cool stuff as well with the jerseys tonight, all in honor. And of course, you can bid on those jerseys and the proceeds going to the Cure Foundation. And I know if you also want to get involved, there's something else coming up. There's a 5K, I believe. What's what's the deal with that? Sure. So we have our 10th annual 5K and Fun Walk. It's occurring on Saturday, April 27th at I Square in Irondequoit. So you can still sign up. We're looking forward to having people there. And it's just another great day to show local families that they're not alone in their battles, that their community cares about them and supports them. In just wants to be there for them as well. Holly, thank you so much for everything that you do. Make sure to go out there and support the Cure Childhood Cancer Association. There's the auction online right here in Rochester right now. The Nighthawks up 7-3 over the Rock. We'll have more coming up after the break. Welcome back to the Halftime Report. Alongside Brendan McDaniels, I'm Craig Grabzinski. Rochester with a 7-3 lead after two quarters of play. And the two guys we're going to highlight, Nick Rose for the Toronto Rock. But more importantly, Warren Hill has played phenomenal for Rochester. Absolutely. These two goaltenders have been outstanding tonight. Both 20-plus saves. Let's take a look at Nick Rose first. This is in the early going. He's a point blank shot there and he's able to turn it away right with his shoulder. That one, that normally goes in, but Nick Rose right there to make the stop and then move ahead to the second quarter. Robertson tries to go low and Rose is able to kick it away and he's been nice, but Warren Hill has been absolutely phenomenal. Last week he had 50 saves in his second start of the season. He has been seeing everything so well. Turns away McCardle this time. Right in front, he's been stretching out. He's been getting him high. He's been getting him a little bit more. Importantly for Warren Hill is he's been clamping the ball as soon as the save is being made. He's not allowing Toronto to get any second or third chance opportunities. And then once he clamps that ball, he's getting it out in transition and allowing the Rochester offense to get moving pretty early. Warren Hill has done everything right. You see, very acrobatic. We talked about it in the first half. 
how he's made the transition back and forth from field goalie to box goalie. It's a hard thing to do. Matt Vincent Buffalo, by the way, in field, he played defense. He didn't even play goalie in field. That's how difficult it is to go back and forth. But Warren Hill right here again on a breakaway with a kick save. He's so athletic. He's got good instincts, and he's really seen the ball so well tonight, Craig. And this has been huge for Rochester. So Warren Hill in his second straight start, looking for a second straight win as the Rochester Nighthawks lead 7-3. to three. You're watching the National Lacrosse League on BR Live. NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. Let's go down to the floor where Jenna is with Tom Schreiber of the Toronto Rock. Yeah, I'm joined right now, Tom Schreiber. Special jerseys tonight for a very special cause. Uh, I guess, what's who are you playing for tonight? And why is this such an important night for you? Well, a lot of people, but on, on the back of my jersey is Brady Wine, um, a really young person. I think he's you know under 10 years old. I've gotten to know him over the last few years. He's fighting hard. Um, it's been an inspiration for me the last few years, and that's why I chose him. How motivating is it to have a guy or a kid on your jersey and playing for such an important cause that means so much to so many people? It, it's super important because everybody's been touched by this and uh, we know how hard that fight is and for us to just go and play a lacrosse game, it, it puts things in perspective. So uh, we're playing hard, we're, we have them in mind and we're going to keep going and playing hard for them. Perfect. Thank you so much. Good luck in the second. Guys, back to you. Thanks a lot, Jenna and Tom Schreiber playing for Brady and the Nighthawks met Brady a couple years ago in New England. His group is called Brady's Bunch, and they're out of uh, the New England region. And Rochester, the Nighthawks all playing for family members, as are the Toronto Rock, friends, family. And Rochester wins the faceoff. Here comes Hasek, now to Jamison, drops it off to Jackson. Back over now to Jamison. Jamison peeling away from Hose Strouser, hits a cutting, Bushi the shot, and Rose calmly makes the stop and grabs the rebound. One too many deeks, he got himself in too deep and didn't have a good angle to shoot. And Rogers cranks that off the crossbar. And Toronto will get their offense out on the floor. 7-3 Rochester opening minutes. Quarter number three. Fired over now on the half wall to Craig. Craig cutting in the middle, feeds it over to McCardle in front. Paulus the shot. And the save made by Warren Hill. And you see how deadly Johnny Paulus can be. He does not need a lot of room to pull the trigger. Now here comes Triolo. And he bounces that one wide. And a crease violation on Triolo. And Toronto will take over. Triolo had a really good look at the cage, and Rochester could have really used that. They've been able to get out a lot in transition, but don't have much to show for it. That one is knocked down. Here comes Withers. Rochester really working the transition game tonight. Now Burke around one. Burke being patient, shooting, and scoring. Beautiful job by Mike Burke. You see, he gets the pick there by Brad Gillies. And after the pick, he's got an opening, but he waits until he gets around the other defender, Reed, and then gets a nice opening to beat Nick Rose. Excellent job of being patient by Mike Burke. He had five points last week. That's his first up tonight. Or excuse me, the second tonight. He had the power play goal in the first half. Off the face-off scrum, big hit on the near glass. And it'll be Toronto Rock possession after the whistle from the backside official. Or actually, they're gonna give the ball to Rochester. Kyle Jackson. Over now to Thieb. Now to Burp is looking for the hat trick. Dumps it off to Bushi. Gets it over to Jackson. Jackson from the high slot. The shot goes wide of the net. Thieb tried to grab it in front. 
Got it over to Burke, who hit his man in front of the net, and Benesh has it stripped away. Feed picks it up out of the far corner, wants to unleash the shot from in tight, banging around in front of the net, and he is going to run out of time. Yeah, he got triple team right there and found himself on an island all by himself. And Rochester got caught in transition going back on the defense. Fed over now to Johnny Paulus. Started his career here in Rochester. Three years, three titles. Fed in front, and that one is knocked away. Great diving effort. Thwarted by Warren Hill. Craig gets away from his man, shooting and scores. Dan Craig broke away from Brandon Robinson and beats Warren Hill. It's now 8-4. Take a look at Craig. He sweeps across from the right to the left. He beats Brandon Robinson, and he's falling over. And I think that's what crossed up Warren Hill a little bit, is he was falling as he was shooting, and it changes the trajectory of the ball. I think Warren Hill was expecting it to be a high shot, and it came in a little bit lower than he expected. Another procedure violation on Thornburg. It's now 11 of 15 face-offs for Jake Withers. Just over 12 to go, third quarter, four goal lead for Rochester. Jackson shooting, saved by Rose. Rebound grabbed and taken behind the net by Triolo. One hands it to Jamison, and that one is gonna make it across midfield. And that's an over and back call. Triolo and Feet have done a great job of keeping the ball alive and giving Rochester Extra opportunities on the offensive end. Schreiber has it knocked away, but it's picked up. In the far corner, pass to McArdle. McArdle gives it over. Schreiber flips it in front of the net, and that's grabbed on the near boards as Craig got his feet crossed up. Now fires that one, and that goes wide of the net. Grabbed up top as McArdle will bounce it on over to Craig. Gives it over now on the half wall. Hellier shooting and wires that one wide of the net. He'll grab his own shot and give it over now to Lindner. The shot and he scores. The bouncer past Warren Hill. And it's now 8-5, two straight for the Rock. Yeah, some nice adjustments by Toronto. At halftime, they given some different looks to Warren Hill. Take a look at it again. Lindner, just a nice little face dodge. Right from the point, take a look at it again. You see just right there, it's like a little half dodge in front of Mike Manley. He gets the shot by Warren Hill. What was a five goal lead is now quickly down to a three goal lead. So Withers against Thorenberg. That one sports over on the near boards, and it's grabbed by Benesh, takes it in on goal, fakes, shoots and scores! The backhander by Benny. A hat trick for Ryan Benesh there. We give him all the credit. He goes after this ball on the faceoff, and he beats Reed to the ball. He shows it left, and then he kind of wraps it around his hip. Right there, does the fake. Wraps it around his hip, around Rose's hip, into the back of the net. Nice job by Ryan Banesh. Procedure call again, and Rochester just dominating the faceoffs tonight. What you haven't seen the last couple weeks is with Jake Withers dominating the X. Dominating the scoreboard as well, and Rochester starting to do that. Oh, a big hit by Thede. We're going to get a penalty on that. As Rogers got back up, has the ball now, and fires that one wide of the net. So Thede got his money's worth on that one, but he's going to go in the penalty box.
take a look at this again. And gets him in the shoulder. It seemed like it was clean to us, but at least to me, I'm not going to speak for you, Chris. <laughs> I'll say that I thought it was clean. Nonetheless, Toronto will go on the man advantage. As Paulus gets it over to Craig. Craig feeds it in front. Paulus trying to get away. He's knocked down to the ground. Craig will feed it up top. Rogers, the overhand attempt. And that one is scooped up by Hill. Fires it ahead now to Barclay. Barclay through the neutral zone. Now to Banesh. He's watched there by Edwards as he has it on the far boards. Now to Bushi. Over to Burke. Over to Jamison. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Flip down back. The shot from outside. The rebound is grabbed by Burke, who will give it back to Jamison. So Rochester killing some valuable time off this penalty. Just over a minute remaining in the Rock power play as Bushi has it with 16 seconds left on the shot clock. Skips it across the floor. Now back near side to Burke. Burke has eight seconds to work with. Looking for the cutter in front, lofts it in front. And that's off the stick of Banesh and Rose will grab it. Rochester was able to kill off almost a minute of that penalty just on that possession alone. Well, Rogers has it in the high slot. Over to Craig, fed in front to Paulus, back up top. Now fed down low and Hasek knocks down Hellier. The shot by Schreiber, he scores. Tom Schreiber with the low shot that beats Hill. And it's now 9-6. Toronto scored three of the last four. That one on the power play, a little worm burner by Schreiber. You see him play it off the wall. He's gonna crank this one low. And Warren Hill, he's been getting down low a lot tonight. This time, to take a look at this, he just doesn't get there as that one goes right between his legs. First goal tonight for Captain America. Tom Schreiber, who's had an impressive rise in the National Lacrosse League. He was an outdoor star. He came to Toronto a little over two years ago. Battled a knee injury last year, was limited action. An outstanding rookie year, was rookie of the year. He was MVP consideration last year up until he got injured. This year having another outstanding season in his third year with the Toronto Rockets. They signed him as a free agent. A lot of folks were surprised when Tom Schreiber decided to play indoor lacrosse. And he's been outstanding. Toronto now, that shot is knocked down in front. McCardle is going after it, was also signed that year as the infusion of American talent helped the Toronto Rock. Yeah, both guys from Long Island. Hollis the shot, and that is knocked away by Hill. Loose ball grabbed. Big hit in front, and Hill will grab it and give it ahead to Hasek. Hasek over to Horn, who's got two assists this evening. Now to Jackson. Jackson still has it. Waiting for backside help, and that feed goes over to Burke. Burke looking, shoots, he scores! Mike Burke with a hat trick. Every time Toronto puts one on the board, Rochester comes back with one. You see that initial screen by the big guy, Dawson Feed, and it's just enough for Mike Burke to have that lane to shoot. And number three on the night for him, him and Banesh, both with hat tricks. Back out to a four goal advantage for the Nighthawks. You gotta love Mike Burke, you know, a guy that has been out of the league for two seasons, was in training camp, gets cut, they call him back. Played one game, he did so well that they have not taken him out of the lineup and he has been fantastic. Here come the Rock the other way, and they get one back. Transition, that's Latrell Harris. 
That's we mentioned. That's a part of Rochester's game where they struggle is that transition. This comes right off the faceoff, and Harris able to beat Brad Gillies to the spot. He puts it right under the arm of Warren Hill. Third season in the NLL for Latrell Harris, just 21 years old. Second round pick, 12th overall by the Rock. 2016 draft. Another one of those guys that is very versatile in what he can do for the Rock. Jamison answers for the Nighthawks. dial it back to the last time Rochester scored. I said that Toronto and Rochester are exchanging goals here. This time, this one comes off the transition. Graham Hasek flips the field over to Cody Jamison and he beats Rogers to the spot. So it's back out to a four goal advantage for the Nighthawks. So back to back transition goals, one by Rochester. It fouled the Toronto Rock transition goal. 11-7 Rochester and Withers grabs it again. He got an assist on the last goal. Withers flips it over to Hasek, gives it to Jamison. Jamison cuts to the middle of the shot. He fires that one wide of the net. And here come the Rock. Rogers, swim move, in on goal, the shot. And the save made by Hill. Toronto with a new goalie now as Nick Rose is on the Rock bench. So Riley Hutchcraft, the backup who's seen very little time so far this year. And he makes the first save as Rochester gets a shot off from that left wing side. Here comes Hellier. Hellier's got Schreiber cutting to the cage. He's also got McCarter. Hellier in the middle. Gives it over to Schreiber. They need him to heat up. That shot whistles wide of the net and skips across midfield. That's an over and back violation. 5.55 to go. Rochester in the lead. 11-7 and Warren Hill with a pretty save. Keeps Rochester ahead by four. Join Devin and Renee this week, taking you inside the action on Inside the NLL every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern on BR Live. And the Rochester Nighthawks, Chris Bushy, man, did he have quite the debut the first game he had here, seven goals and two assists. And he has been quite the welcome addition on offense. Yeah, bushy has been outstanding since he came over to the trade from Calgary. Burke is stopped in tight. Panesh goes after it. They'll give it on back to Jackson, near side to Bushi. Bushi over to Jackson. Now to Panesh. Inside the Bushi has it stripped away, but picked up and fired in. Hutchcraft will make the stop as that one was deflected. Here comes Rogers. Slade, swim move the shot, and Hill makes the save. Here comes Horn. Horn in on goal over the top of the net. Aaron Pass now is picked off by Manley. Mike. Save made by Warren Hill. So Warren Hill been keeping Rochester in this game. He's got 27 saves so far tonight. Jamison drops it back for Thede. 
near side to Burke looking for four and that one is stopped. And so I thought Hutchcraft got a piece of it, it went out of play. 4.04 to go. Rochester with a four goal lead, 11-7. You're watching the NLL on VR Live. Don't miss the NLL's newest show, NLL Flash, hosted by Tyson Geik, taking a closer look at the NLL's hottest topics and takes from an all-star cast of analysts from across North America every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on NLL.com. 11-7, Rochester in a must-win scenario. They need New England to lose. We'll give you an update on that game in, in the fourth quarter as that's in the latter stages. New England had a four goal lead late. Backhander he scores, Tom Schreiber. Tom Schreiber was quiet the entire first half and he's come alive in this third quarter. It's his second of the quarter. So he gets in, he weaves himself in between two double, between a double team, excuse me, between Hasek and Manley. And Manley has a bodied up but Schreiber able to wrap the shot right around him. Three forty-eight to go, and the Toronto Rock are within three. Procedure call. It'll be Rochester possession. A lot of procedure calls on Jay Thornburg tonight, which is very uncharacteristic for a veteran, 32 years old out of Whitby, Ontario, 12th season in the NLL. And Hutchcraft's pass overshoots the stick of Slade and Rochester will take over. Yeah, you mentioned Thornbird, he's approaching Jeff Snyder's all-time face-off record. He's inching ever so closely. Jackson, shooting, save, rebound, he tried to Grab it, dive, and get it on net, and that one, he lost it out of his stick, and now here come the Rock looking to cut the deficit to two as Hellier with the ball on the right wing. Less than three minutes to go as they change up personnel as Schreiber will give it back over to Hellier. Now near side to Paulus. He got the sneak play on as he got the extra man. It's Craig. Craig looking, shooting, and that hit Armstrong. It ricochets across midfield. Yeah, that was a shot clock violation as Jamison picks it up, fires it in on goal. Save, rebound, Triolo lets one go. Hutchcraft's got to make back-to-back -back saves. Fed down the floor to a cutting Slade, the shot. And a left glove save by Hill. Withers tried to pick it up. Hill will loft it ahead now to Withers, and he's trying to beat the eight second call, and he does not. Two minutes and 10 seconds to go. Penalty coming up to the Nighthawks. As Schreiber will give it over to Paulus. Ray McCardle out for the extra attacker. Paulus now to Schreiber who's got two. Over to Paulus. Fed down low, now back to Schreiber. Near side and that one is grabbed. As Van Scheppen grabbed that one off the near boards. Take a look at the penalty here, they're gonna get Withers. They're going to call him for a trip. And the crowd just seeing that on replay. Seemed like it was incidental contact there. I don't, it doesn't look like Withers was trying to trip there. So they're calling delay a game. I think he didn't give him enough room after the restart of the ball. As that one skips across midfield, it was touched by a Nighthawk defender as Barclay will argue his case to no avail. Shot clock is down to eight. Rogers over to Craig, fed down low to Paulus. 
Back up top, Rogers has to hurry. Now to Craig, fires that one wide of the net, and that is a shot clock violation. Well, Rochester doing a good job, shorthanded, forcing a shot clock violation. As Toronto, two for three on the power play thus far. Bushi got it across on the far side to Banesh. Skip pass to Burke. 10 seconds on the shot clock, less than a minute to go here in the third. Driving in on goal, and that one is fired wide of the net. Grabbed by Bushi as he'll fire it on back. And the Rock now with 40 seconds to work with. Still on the man advantage. Hellier flips it back to Schreiber. Now to Paulus. Back to Schreiber in the high slot. Near side to Paulus. Back to Schreiber, now to Paulus. They play catch up top. Paulus, that was an intended pass for Paulus. Picked out of the air, here come the Nighthawks. Triolo tried to scoop it off the turf. Hellier came in to break it up, and Triolo corrals, corrals the loose ball. Gives it to Jamison, 10 seconds left. Jamison draws the double team. Now has three seconds left, over to Burke. Fires from the outside and he misses wide. Now he got a little extracurriculars in front of the rock bench between Ho Strauser and Burke. Well, the third quarter will come to a close. Rochester 11, Toronto 8. You're watching the National Lacrosse League on BR Live. The chase for the championship has begun and only one team can be crowned champion. Be sure to catch all the action live as the playoff race heats up. Round one of the NLL playoffs begins March 3rd through the 5th on BR Live. I'd like to welcome those who are in attendance tonight. To my left, members of the Eyed family of dealerships taking in tonight's Rochester Nighthawks game. Eleven eight Rochester. And Toronto has scored two of the last three goals. And Brendan, you've got a playoff race update for us. Yes, in final score out in Connecticut, New England 17, San Diego 14. San Diego outscored New England eight to two in the fourth quarter, including scoring four of the last five goals, but New England wins which means they will lock in that fourth playoff spot in the East. So the Rochester Nighthawks are eliminated from postseason contention. So all of the teams, all the four playoff spots in the East have been locked up. So Philly and Rochester out of the postseason hunt. And Toronto here trailing by three. They're trying to keep pace of Buffalo and Georgia. They're looking for a home playoff date. I'll tell you, the, the East Division here, whether it's Georgia, Toronto, or Buffalo, any one of those combinations is going to be a great series to see who represents the East in the Cup Finals. Here comes Banesh. Banesh from the left wing. He'll leave it back to Triolo, getting away from Hostrauser. Now to Burke. Over near side to Banesh. And that's trying to get free. His pass sails away and Hostrauser will pick it up. Feeds it on ahead. Racing in on goal, the shot. And the save made by Warren Hill. Fed in front of the net. And that was intended for Lintner. That was picked off. Flipped over into the far corner. That's Rochester trying to clear it out. That's the 30th save tonight for Warren Hill. Hellier backing his way in, ducks away from a... Check that 31st save. Hellier now with the ball in the right wing. Over to Paulus, he shoots and scores. Johnny Paulus had a couple assists so far tonight, but he had been held off the scoreboard until now the former Rochester Nighthawk pulls it within two. You see Paulus 
goes low. That's the second time this half that the Rockets scored on one of those worm burners that barely gets off the carpet. Tom Schreiber had one in the third quarter, and now Paulus gets it. Johnny Paulus came into the league as an 18-year-old. It's hard for me to believe and see him playing and know that he's 26 years old and he's, his, he's in his eighth season. I remember interviewing him at the draft when he's just 18 years old and now he's a grizzled veteran. A well-traveled Rochester, Vancouver, Minnesota slash Georgia. He was with Calgary the offseason, never actually stood up for him. After he got traded from New England to Calgary and then Calgary over to Toronto. He's got four championships already. How about that? 26 years old, you got four championships. Not yeah. a bad start. Got three in Rochester and one with the Swarm a couple years ago. Schreiber, a little shake and bake up top, gets it over to Paulus. Paulus spin move, still has it. Feeds it through the slot. It's grabbed on the near boards by Lintner. Back to Paulus, the shot, and he missed wider than that. Van Scheppen gets it on ahead to Robinson. Who will take it into the Toronto zone? Bet over now to Burke. Over on the far boards to Bushi. Near side to Thee. That pass is too high. Intercepted. Rock trailing by two, and here they come in transition. Pushing the pace the other way. In on goal. Jay wanted to pull the trigger. Got completely handcuffed right there. That was excellent. And now Schreiber and company will hit the turf. Over now to Lintner. Kyle Jackson not known for his defense. But he saved a goal right there. Shot from the outside, and that's stopped by Hill. As McCardle let that one go. Here comes Warren Horn. Horn now on the near boards. As he fed it over to Jamison. Jamison trying to get free, feeds it across off the stick of Burke. That one has flipped off the far glass and the Rock will take it away. 10 minutes and 50 seconds to go here in the fourth. 11-9 is our score. Craig now left wing side, shooting, Hill the save. The ball is underneath them as Withers will get it across midfield to Robertson. They'll leave it on back for Bushi. Now Cody Jamison gives it across the shot. Robertson save by Hutchcraft. It one looked like it went off the pipe before Hutchcraft got a piece of it. Rogers feeds it into Lindner, the shot from in tight. Yeah, that one did get past Warren Hill, but a crease violation. And Hasek will take it into the Toronto end. Fed in front, and that one is too far for Triolo, backed up on the near boards by Jamison. Jackson. Feeds it over to Triolo, he's tied up. Scooped up by Harris. Try to thread the needle into a very tight area. I've seen the Lighthawks throw the last couple ones away. Trying to force some passes here. Paulus gives it over now on the far boards. Fed in front, Paulus shoots and scores. Johnny Paulus. Horn tried to get back, but Paulus beats Hill from in tight. It's 11-10. Back-to-back goals for Johnny Paulus. You see, comes off the screen, working with Dan Craig. He comes off the screen. Oren Horn just comes off him just a little bit. Johnny Paulus has those hands free, buries it. So Paulus at 5:31, two goals in a row. 
from Johnny Paulus. He was our player to watch for the Toronto Rock. He's having himself quite the game. Four points tonight. Now here come the Nighthawks in transition. The shot by Hasek is deflected wide and a crease violation on the Nighthawks. 9-12 to go and the Toronto Rock on a 3-0 run are within one, 11-10. You're watching the National Lacrosse League on BR Live. The Nighthawks are back in action on Connors and Ferris Field at the Blue Cross Arena on Saturday, April 20th. Purchase a distillery eats and seats pack, which includes a ticket to the game and a $15 distillery gift card for just $70. Visit nighthawks.com slash distillery to get your pack. Brendan, one of the stars tonight for Toronto, Tom Schreiber. Yeah, Schreiber, a couple of assists and then he got a couple goals. There's his first assist, and there he crosses the field over to Craig. Then Craig gets in there for the goal, and then how about some goals? This time he plays it off the wall. The worm burner gets it right between the legs of Warren Hill. Then he sweeps inside, weaves between Hasek and Manley, and gets another one in there. So Captain America doing a great job for the Rock, helping them get back into this game. Toronto just down one. Craig with it, a shot from the outside, and that one deflects into the far corner, and Brad Gillies will scoop it up. 8.38 to go. Rochester's gone almost a full quarter without scoring. They're approaching 14 minutes scoreless. Feed flips it back. And that one is tracked down by Bushi. Gives it over to Burke, now inside to Bushi. It's stripped away. Nice defensive play there by Reed. Rochester should not been clean offensively over the last couple minutes. Seems like they're trying to force too many passes. Going around the corner now is Hellier. Over on the far boards. Just under eight to go. McCardle feeds it over. Paulus fires and misses wide. He set his feet and let it go. And just missed. Shot clock did not reset there. So Toronto had to get off a quick shot. And Lindner was denied by Hill. Near side. As Rochester will wait for their offensive reinforcements. Banesh. Gives it over to Jamison. Jamison in the slot, spin move, one-handed between the legs, and Hutchcraft makes the save. And Hutchcraft has played great since coming in a relief of Rose. Now Lindner denied by Hill. Hutchcraft a perfect 10 for 10 on shots and saves. He has not given up a goal since he replaced Nick Rose. Horn fed it across midfield. Van Scheppen lost his footing. Harris all over him, and he flips it on the near boards to Banesh. Bushi from the right wing, fed it across. That's grabbed on the near glass by Kyle Jackson, who shoots from the outside, save, rebound. And that one is grabbed, and Toronto now will work it up the floor. Across midfield, now it's given to Craig. Toronto looking to tie things up with six and a half to go. Fed over to Hellier. Hellier shooting, that goes wider than that, across midfield, and that's an over and back violation. Shots are 50 to 47 in favor of the Nighthawks. Rochester now 16 minutes without a goal. Mike Burke on the near boards, Jamison getting away from his man, driving the shot, that's knocked away. Magnuson now will feed it over. And that got brought back through the crease and Rochester will gladly take over. Less than six remaining. Burke now drawing the double team. Trying to get away from Holstrauser, lost his footing on the far boards. 
fires it over to Jamison off his stick, and here come the Rock on the run. In the Rochester zone, Magnuson. Penalty coming up to the Nighthawks as it was fed across. It was intended for Slade, and that one was broken up. A bench penalty coming up to the Nighthawks. This has to be served by the in-home, which is Armstrong, Colton Armstrong. So, awful timing for the penalty. Five thirty-five to go. Tom Schreiber, two goals and three assists tonight for the 27-year-old. Eighth in points in the NLL coming into tonight's contest. Schreiber over to Paulus, back to Schreiber, near side. Hellier to Schreiber, over to Paulus, back to Schreiber. Feeds it to Hellier, to Paulus, the low shot, and that's knocked away. And now Gillies takes the outlet from Hill. Brad Gillies will feed it back to Triolo. Triolo against Harris on the half wall, less than five to go. Fed in front, the shot, he scores! Ryan Banesh buries it, a short-handed goal, and the Nighthawks lead 12-10. A crucial goal for the Nighthawks. Take a look at this again, Triolo finds Banesh who beat Tulet. See, Banesh comes streaking in. And that hits the back iron. And the challenge flag has come out by Matt Sawyer, but he's going to lose this. That's a good goal. Four fifty-four to go. Yeah, I guess it's worth the challenge if you think that there's a possibility that they could take that goal off the board. But unless they're going to try to say that Banesh's foot was in the crease before that ball crossed the goal line. That's the only recourse I think they have because that clearly went in and it hit the back piping of the goal, of the bottom of the goal before it came back out. Take a look at it again and see where his foot lands. Ah, that's a crease violation. I take that back. That's a good challenge. That foot is absolutely in the crease right there. How many times have we seen that over the last four or five games where it's just that little instance late in the game where Rochester can take a lead, tie a game, get back in a game. There's always been a couple crease violations. One in Toronto, one here against, I think it was against Georgia. Yep. And now this one by Banesh, and it was Banesh, the one game where he went through the crease, yep. then grabbed the ball and scored. After review, the shooter contacts the crease prior to the ball crossing the goal line. The goal ruling is overturned, no goal. We head to immediate so no timeout. That's what you call when you say, man, it's a game of inches. It certainly is, and, I, and it's interesting because I, I didn't see that initially the first time around. It's on replay. Good eyes by The Rock. 11-10 Rochester, 4.54 to go. You're watching the NLL on BR Live. And now the play of the game presented by Geico. And that great goal by Ryan Vanesh. Play of the game presented by Geico and Benny with three goals tonight and Rochester with a one goal lead. But the crucial one that he didn't get, the one just moments ago where his foot's in the crease. And Rochester clinging to a one goal lead here. Still a little over a minute left on the man up for Toronto. Schreiber from the high slot, beats it over to Craig. Back to Schreiber in front of the net. The shot by Paulus, kick saved by Hill. Rebound, Robertson going after it. Gillies thought he had it momentarily and here comes Graham Hasek. 
gusting away. He lost the handle on it as Rogers took it away. And Rochester had it. Robertson fed it back. That's an over and back violation. And Toronto will take over. Got a little too trigger happy right there. He had some time. Wallace up top to Schreiber. 11-10 Rochester. Four minutes to go in the fourth. Schreiber fed to Craig. Tried to duck away from Hasek. Now passed up. Schreiber backpedaling. Six seconds on the shot clock shot. Kill the save. And Hasek will clear it out. And this will kill off the penalty as well. Benesh cutting to the middle. Has his stick knocked away. And here come the Rock. In transition, it's late. He doesn't see the backside. Pressure by Armstrong, but he's able to get it back. Armstrong came bolting out of that penalty box to make sure that that transition didn't happen for the Rock. Craig from the high slot shot. Left arm save, and Mike Manley will scoop it up. Manley into the Rock zone. Rochester hanging on to a one goal lead. Flip pass to Bushi, watch there by Harris. Rochester closing in on 20 minutes without a goal. Burke shooting, Hutchcraft the save. Here comes McCardle, feeds it ahead to a streaking Edwards, in on goal, the shot, kick save by Hill. What a huge save by Warren Hill. Point blank range, got his foot on it. Toronto with two and a half to go. Thinking what can they do to solve Warren Hill? Hellier grabs it, feeds it over to Lindner in front, Paulus pushes it wide. It's free in front of the net and it's scooped up by Hill who will waft it on ahead to Withers. Withers has it on the right wing, feeds it to a cutting Bushi. Gets away from two defenders. Now gives it to Benesh. Over now on the far side to Burke. Burke still with it. Feeds it to Jackson. Shot, save, rebound. Jackson follows it up over to Benesh. Fed in front of the net and he can't connect with Bushi. Hutchcraft has been great in cage so far. 90 seconds to go. Hellier across to Craig. Near side to Hellier. Has it in the high slot. Now from the off wing, the shot. Stick saved by Warren Hill. Rolled on ahead as Robertson has it. Trying to get away from Harris. Gives it to Hasek. Fire down the near boards to Jamison. Just over a minute to go, Jamison in front of the shot, Banesh denied. Banesh had an opportunity. And I believe we have a timeout. A timeout by Toronto, trying to figure out how they can get one more past Warren Hill. Amazing thing is Rochester hasn't scored in 21 minutes. So Riley Hutchcraft has 13 saves on 13 shots since he came in in 21 minutes of action. That one just kind of trickled through and never really got to him. There's a save by Warren Hill. Now from up top, Hutchcraft was there. Got a pad on it. See Hutchcraft going down low. This time he faces a rifle from Kyle Jackson, saves it up high. That time he gets a stick on it. Hutchcraft, a third round draft pick in 2017, only played 25 minutes this season, had 13 saves on 16 shots. As you, as you might guess, Toronto pulls Hutchcraft, so they get the extra attacker out there. One minute to go. Here come the Rock looking to tie things up. Rogers 
Gets it across to Craig. Feeds it behind the net. Now back out in front to Rogers, to Schreiber. Over to Craig, fed behind the net. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Off the stick of Rogers. He knocks his man down. Now a scrum for the loose ball. It's still free. Shot clock violation. And Rochester forces the violation with 29 seconds to go. There's no goalie in it. And we got a whistle behind the play. Uh, is there a penalty coming up? I have no idea what's going on here. There's a shot clock violation. So when they restarted, they're saying the clock started before they, before the whistle blew. But still, Hutchcraft is not in the game. So there should still be an empty net here to start the play. So they're making Jamison start. And Jamison's going for a little stroll behind his own net. Fires it down and that one's taken away. Cree knocked it away. Here come the Rocks. Slade trying to be hero again. That one is stripped away. Fired down the floor. Empty net. Bushi scores. The Rock elected not to bring Hutchcraft in and keep the extra attacker out there in hopes that they could force the turnover. This is gonna be close, I think. So we'll take a look at the replay and see where his foot lands. That's good. That looks good. That looks like that's gonna count. So, contentious scoring plays under two minutes are subject to automatic review. After review, the goal comes. So it's a good goal. All goals in the final two minutes are reviewed. 6.6 .6 to go. And Bushi with the empty netter. So Rochester went 21 minutes and 57 seconds without a goal. And are going to come away with a 12-10 victory. Warren Hill with another gem in goal. And the Rochester Nighthawks with their first winning streak of the season. Twelve ten is our final here from Rochester, New York. We'll come back with a post-game wrap-up. You're watching the National Lacrosse League on BR Live. Welcome back to Connors and Ferris Field at the Blue Cross Arena alongside Brendan McDaniels. I'm Craig Grzynski. What a great victory for the Rochester Nighthawks, their first winning streak of the season. And they are victorious 12-10 over the Toronto Rock. Let's go downstairs now with the eyed player of the game, Jenna Cottrell with Ryan Banesh. I'm joined now, Ryan Banesh, three goals, three of six, and a Nighthawks win. How does tonight feel? Feels great. Uh, it's, it's been a while since we've won here at home, so, you know, this game meant a lot to, a lot to everybody, so it's good to get that win. And now a win streak as well. How do you kind of bring this momentum into next week? Just got to keep sticking to the game plan. You know, we're gelling at the right time. It's uh, it's fun fun to play on this team. Everybody's having a good time, and it's, it's awesome. These amazing jerseys as well, going to the Cure Childhood Cancer Association, an important cause. What does it mean to play for so many families going through so much? It's an honor, honestly, you know, um, to be able to suit up for, you know, people that have either fought cancer or lost their battle to cancer. Um, you know, it's just, you know, like the name on my back, I'm playing for her memory and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you so much, Ryan. Guys, back to you. Thanks a lot, Jenna and Ryan Benesh, one of the 
Big stories tonight, three goals and three assists. A lot of good storylines for the Rochester Nighthawks this evening. It was. Warren Hill played outstanding in goal. Jake Withers with another huge game at the faceoff X. The offense came alive. The defense played smart. They picked up a win against a very good team, a team that's going to contend for a championship this year at home. And as Rochester has struggled, as Ryan Banesh just said, this team's finally starting to come together. All these new pieces are starting to work together, and they're starting to figure things out. So it's a nice win for them. It's a big win against a very good team at home. It's something that they can celebrate tonight. Two wins in a row, three games to go, and the Rochester Nighthawks can play spoiler. They really hurt Toronto's chances for a home playoff game. They travel to Colorado next weekend, and then they end at home against Vancouver and then against the New England Black Wolves. So Rochester still a lot to play for this season. They certainly do, and if you're not going to make the playoffs playing spoiler, that's one of the best things that you can do, and they can really affect the season. New England, see how they do. Vancouver, they're still in the playoff hunt. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Calgary for that final spot out in the West. So it's something that they can play for and something they can have fun with and see if they can keep gelling. Well, Rochester once again victorious tonight. 12 to 10 over the Toronto Rock for Brendan McDaniels, Jenna Cottrell, John Catalano, all his cast and crew. I'm Craig Rubzinski. Thanks for joining us tonight. You have been watching a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League.